So you tried uh, this is session post lunch and the energy is down. I can see that. Uh, let's get this going, right? Uh, the this topic is ex extremely exciting and very close to me. Okay, uh, when when people reached out to me and said, let's talk about TV. Uh, I said, you know, yes, we can talk about TV. We can talk about TV first. We can talk about a lot of what is happening. But I think what we also need to do is talk about what we are not doing, right? And that's what my session is going to be about. My session is going to be more about what is it that we can do, what other people are doing, and maybe we need to learn from them. Maybe the stuff that Indian advertising is doing is not enough, right? And that's why most of my, or in fact, all my examples are not going to be from India. They're going to be from international market and some very cool ones. So let me quickly jump into it. Next slide, please. Oh, right. I'll tell you this a little more. You'll realize why I'm not saying hi and hello, but something else, right? Go next, please. So this is the state of Indian advertising. It's a vast sea. It's a sea of sameness. We get we see 20 second or 30 second ads. They all tend to look similar. They will all have a story, a twist in the tale, one funny dialogue. Right? That's where we are, and very good. It's working for us. That's fantastic, right? However, if we really want to make the most of this medium, which is so nice, so cool, we need to do something else, right? Otherwise, we can get lost in the sea. So we have two options. Either we get lost in the sea, add more of 30 seconders, 40 seconders out there and continue the storytelling or every once in a while we can, we can behave slightly differently in the sea, which is, next please, which is we can be a pirate. You know what I mean by that? What I mean is you can really go out there and challenge the storm, right? We can go out there and take over things, do things very differently, unexpectedly, attack things, right? And, and that's what we are not doing. We are really happy doing those 30 seconds, but we are not really pushing the boundaries. And what pirates really do is they push the boundary. Why do they do that? Right? Just go next, please. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah? So, this is what they do, right? They put the flag on TV and own it. That's what a pirate would do and that's what we need to do. We need to own TV and own TV like, like not a commercial break would own. Own TV like content would own, right? Like shows would own, right? So this is going back now. Super, right? These are pirates and that's what we can be. We really can be if we really not follow the rules because that's what pirates do. They don't follow the rules. They don't restrict themselves to a 30 second or a, a protagonist story or a product window, right? They really go and break out there and that's what I would urge each and every one of you all to do because when you do that is when we will really become cool, right? That's what cool pirates are, right? They do not wait for a commercial break. They do not wait that, you know, my turn will come and then I will put up my hand and talk like a, like a commercial break or a brand would do. They really go out there and steal the show. And when I mean steal the show, they don't only be restricted to that, those seconds. They actually come and take over the show itself. Sometimes be part of the show itself, right? And there's a really nice example. I'll quickly play this and we can talk more about it. I, thank you. Welcome back to Australian Open. Chaos has been serving so well in this match. Tonight, I'll be eating a cheesy garlic bread and a Neapolitan ice cream sundae. Cheers, mate. What you just experienced is a small taste of how we hijack the broadcast of a live sport event watched by over 13 million people. Presenting the Uber Eats Australian Open Ambush. The idea was simple. Make everyone believe they were returning to the tennis broadcast only to have it suddenly become a dinner order for Uber Eats. The execution, however, wasn't simple at all. The broadcast had to be duplicated down to every detail. So we used the real broadcast crew, cameras, officials and commentators. We shot players in their real match uniforms and even deliberately showed all the other sponsors. We then had to combine all our films with real event graphics and crowd shots from the tournament. But still, that wasn't enough. Each spot's media placement also had to be perfect. Placed at the end of an ad break during the player's match. Nadal is not happy. Okay, dumplings. We were the Chinese last night. Okay. Tonight, I'll be eating gluten-free dumplings with sesame brown toast. Fantastic. 
Dina Valeshan Nadal. You hear me? Our integration into the tennis of 14 different films proved so seamless, viewers began to wonder if at any time a game would suddenly become an Uber Eats ad. Of course, they took over the, the entire thing, right? Sorry. So they, they took over the entire show, right? Every time the match would start, people would wonder, is it an Uber Eats ad or is, is the match beginning, right? Any other the way of doing it would be, you know, getting these big stars, holding their pack shots, standing and talking about how this product is really, really good. They went all out, they challenged the norms and this is what they got, right? Something that people are still talking about it even after years of work has been done. People are talking about it in another country altogether, right? And that's what pirates can do. If they challenge, if you if you really, really go out there and break the norms and not stick yourself to, to, a, to a commercial break. The other thing that they do is they do not back, beg for attention, right? They do not say, oh, look at me, right? They don't do that. What they do is they do this. They hijack, right? They just take over. You, they, they're not asking you to look at them. You can't help but look at them, right? And that's what another brand has done. We'll quickly see this example and talk more. Could you play this, please? Okay. Listen, Burger King, quit messing with my mind. Quit messing with my emotions. You're watching a 15 second Burger King ad. Which is unfortunately not enough time to explain all the fresh ingredients in the Whopper sandwich. But I got an idea. Okay, Google, what is the Whopper burger? According to Wikipedia, the Whopper is a burger. Consisting of a flame grilled quarter pound beef patty, sesame seed bun, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato, pickles, ketchup, and sliced onion. The problem is, the definitions are coming from the Whopper's Wikipedia page. People trolled the absolute hell out of Burger King by constantly changing what Wikipedia said. Patty made with 100% medium sized child. And after a few back and forth entries, Burger King eventually restored the original content. Google says it made changes to stop its devices from responding. At first, Google had said it would fix it, but then apparently Burger King released additional ads last night that still trigger it, so. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. What is the Whopper Burger? Oh, it did work. It did work. Okay. This we all know how it goes, right? But fantastic. They hacked into Google. They hacked into Google Home. They got out of their television, which is what we are all aspiring to be. They got out of that and got into people's home and started talking to them, right? That's the way to do it. That's an opportunity that we have with the medium because the medium is in, there in every pe person's house. It's right there. They're engaging with it. Can we come out of the television and talk to them? Can we do something with their surrounding? There is opportunity and this brand has already done it, right? And there are many more of these opportunities which are out there for us to explore. The next example comes from this whole thinking of they do not wait for a brief, right? Generally what happens is marketers will think of a brief, they'll go to the creative guy, they'll think of an idea, mostly it'll start with film opens on and then, you know, we'll go further, right? But sometimes you don't really need to do that. Especially with something as dynamic as television, you can do so much more. And that's what these guys do, right? They are opportunists. A pirate would be an opportunist, they will wait for a, something, observe something which is already there in common culture or already on television and hijack it hi, and take over and do something really nice. I will quickly play two examples. The first one I will rush through in the interest of time and the second one we will talk more. Please play. Music for Life, organized by radio station Studio Brussels and the Red Cross, was this year all about drinkable water. Every 15 seconds, a child dies due to lack of drinkable water. Studio Brussels wanted to raise money to mend this global problem. We started from the insight that every TV host has a glass of water. It's so normal that nobody notices it. Until we started this guerrilla campaign. There zullen weer tranen van geluk vloeien. Heel wat bekende gasten komen langs. En standaard hadden gezegd, wij doen niet meer mee met het tv-contract zolang er geen verandering is in de Belgische competitie. Oui. 
<laughs> dus. uh, even de vader <laughs> oppakken. Uh. Zou dat eigenlijk iets voor jou zijn, een zangcarrière? Want het, het is nogal stress hè, op zo'n podium staan en niet acteren. Het is een, inderdaad ook. <laughs> <laughs> het, is een, uh, het, is een, het is een ander vak. De nieuwe blonde showbiz god Staf Steegmans. Revelaties, Serke Brugge, kom je actie in Lokeren. Maar ook op de andere velden kregen we een pakspectakel. Dus... The Black Boy showed up on Flanders' best watch station 1 during three days. So, such a brilliant insight, right? We've all seen that glass of water kept next to the newsreader always. They saw this, they saw this as an opportunity and took over. Got this guy to enter every studio, drink that glass of water and made the larger point outside television saying that, you know, there is such a big problem or in Africa, can we please help, right? Disrupting the show itself. It's so nice, it's so interesting. It, it was out there for everyone to see, but these guys capitalized on it. There's another example quickly we'll go to. Oh dear. This I'm guessing most of you all would have seen, but we'll, we'll, it's worth seeing again. Is this a Tide ad or is this another real ad? Right. Is this a Tide ad? Is this one? Is every ad a Tide ad? Wait a minute. Is this, 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 this year, Tide won the Super Bowl by doing something that's never been done before, turning every ad into a Tide ad. This is how we did it. Yeah, just a typical Super Bowl car ad. Right? But... It's a Tide ad. What? It's a Tide ad. Look at those clean clothes. What else would this be an ad for? A razor? No. Tide ad. So, does this make every Super Bowl ad a Tide ad? I think it does. Within seconds, hashtag Tide ad began trending. Soon, millions of viewers were suddenly questioning if every single Super Bowl ad they saw was a Tide ad. Then we took the idea further. Hello again, ladies. Is your man the kind of man who would climb the height? <clears throat> I'm in a tight end. And further. Sarah? Sarah? It's a tight end. We even hijacked the live broadcast. Welcome back to another tight end. It was so big that other brands felt the need to say they were not a tight end, including the competition. But it was too late. The yeah, internet loved it so much that it immediately became a meme. And the media loved it too. Tide stole the show. They kind of hijacked the entire Super Bowl. James, you love the Tide commercial. I said, baby, what are we washing our clothes with? If it's not Tide, we're doing it wrong. This was the best out of the Super Bowl. And I'm wearing a white shirt making this. I tell ya. The clean clothes in every ad is a Tide ad, right? They just took over Super Bowl. They took over every ad out there. There were people who tweeted that is my entire life a tight ad. <laughs> so, so that's the opportunity we have with television because it reaches every house. It goes everywhere, right? And and you can have a have a conversation with everyone at large, big conversation. But we need to push the boundaries. We don't need to be restricted to that box. We don't need to think of everything and think from that point of view, right? The minute you take two steps back, you can be a pirate too. Very simple rule to be a pirate. Quit the Navy. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Stop getting so straight jacketed, thinking that an ad has to be a 30 second. It needs to have a story. It needs to have a character. It needs to have a punchline, a product window. No, it doesn't need to. It really doesn't need to. Right? The minute we stop thinking like that, the minute we start looking at this medium and challenging the boundaries, we will do stuff which is worth looking at from really far away. Right? And that's the reason why I've taken all examples as international examples because I don't believe that we are doing this. I'm guilty too. I must be, I should be doing this and I'm not doing it as well. But please help us do this. This is what we need to do. We need to push the boundary of this medium and, and this can go everywhere. This can be the biggest thing which internet cannot be. Thank you.